Hello everyone. How are you all? I hope everyone is fine. I am also doing great. Once again I am in front of you all for discussing common conceptual mistake which a student should avoid while writing CA final FR paper. As already discussed or said in my previous video that this video is going to help any chartered accountant for clearing their CA interview. So can we start? Today we will be discussing three such type of questions. But before discussing, I would like you to comment in the comment box so that I can understand how you are liking this video, means whether you are liking or you are not liking this video. And if you are liking this video, can you say it will motivate me to make more and more video on such concept? So please do comment in the comment box. Correct. Can we start with the question? So what is the first question of the day? Listen carefully. What is the question? Are revalued assets are required to be tested for impairment? Let me first explain the question. We all know that property, plan, and equipment and intangible asset are subsequently recognized under either under cost model or revaluation model as per India 16 and India 36 res respectively. Means, can you say property, plan, and equipment and intangible asset if an entity has opted revaluation model, then such asset may be revalued at such asset can be revalued at fair value. The question is that if such asset is already carried at fair value, whether impairment testing is required on such revalued asset as per India 36. So what is your answer? Whether you answer yes or no, what you are thinking? If you are saying no, so it is absolutely wrong. So yes, such asset are also required to be tested for impairment means as per India 36. Any revalued asset will be also required to be tested as per India 36. Means what India 36 says that revaluation is done at fair value and impairment is done at recoverable amount. So, what is recoverable amount? Recoverable amount means higher of value new and fair value less cost to sale. Cost to sale means what is the difference between fair value and fair value less cost to sale is the cost to sale. So what India 36 want to say that if cost of disposal of such revalued asset is negligible, then you can ignore impairment testing, then such revalued asset are not supposed to be tested for impairment. But if cost of disposal is not negligible, if cost of disposal is not negligible, then such asset should be tested for impairment testing. Understood? Yes, sir. I hope you have understood. So can I conclude that any revalued asset? need to be tested for impairment as per India 36 as per India 36 correct what is the second question what is the second question RPP or investment property or intangible asset tested for impairment before the asset is ready for its intended use correct means whether before the asset is ready for its intended use whether such assets are required to be tested for impairment answer is no which normally can you say Subsequent recognition will start once the asset is ready for use. An asset is tested for impairment under subsequent recognition, not under initial recognition. I hope you are understanding. Means, once the asset is ready for its intended use or available for its intended use, then only such asset may be depreciated or impaired. Depreciation will be done as per respective India's, impairment will be done as per India's 36. Correct? But there is one exception to this rule. What India 36 says that any intangible asset not yet available for use, any intangible asset not yet available for use will be tested for impairment even though it is not yet available for use. Means can I conclude that any property plan and equipment and any investment property will be tested for impairment only once asset is ready for use. But intangible asset need to be impaired on annual basis even though asset is not yet available for use. I hope you have understood. Have you understood this point? So in this also point, from my point of view, students sometimes have doubt. So can I conclude once again that for property plan and equipment and investment property, impairment test, testing will be done only once the assets are ready for use. But for intangible assets, annual impairment testing will be done even though asset is not yet available for use. Understood, yes sir. What is the last question for the day? Are asset tested for impairment annually as per India 36? So what is the general rule of India 36 that normally an asset are tested for impairment only when there is indicator of impairment. 
only when there is an indicator for impairment but there is one exception to this rule that there are three type of intangible assets which require impairment testing on an annual basis irrespective irrespective of indicator what are that three type of intangible asset this exception is only for intangible asset not for property plan and equipment not for investment property means property plan and equipment and investment property are tested for impairment only when there is indicator but there are three type of intangible asset which require annual impairment testing irrespective of indicator first is goodwill arising in case of business combination second intangible asset not yet available for use third intangible asset having indefinite life correct now so normally these intangible asset are not amortized so that will be tested for impairment on an annual basis irrespective of indicator so normally such intangible asset will be tested annually as well as when there is indicator i hope you have understood please make a note of all these three conceptual point correct which will help you in revision before exam or before interview so i am hoping that you are noting down all these common conceptual mistake which you should avoid correct yes sir i hope you have liked this video if you have liked this video please share this video with your friends so that they are also benefited with such concept thank you very much for today we'll meet once again in the next video with new concept till then bye bye take care enjoy your remaining day bye bye